When my nuts are tender, turn them over in the fire tonight. Uh, roast my nuts over a fucking chest fire, bitch. Come on, uh, uh. Anyways, <clears throat> so I decided I'm going to not technically read the whole thing, I don't think, but I sort of did this roast of you. Speaking of roasting chestnuts, um, <clears throat> because you were in the first book, and I felt, you know, why not? Now, the first, the first title was Matt, the greatest friend in the world next to shit. I titled this one, and very witty, by the way, on my part, Matt, the greatest shit in the world next to a friend. <laughs> and, which I think is fitting, especially when I talk about what I talk about. So it's going to be kind of a reading slash commentary kind of, I'll talk about it. Now, before I get into it, I want to point out, it's all tongue-in-cheek, it, it, it's meant as a roast, it's meant as like, so, you know, if it gets a little personal, it's, you know, fine, it's supposed to be, you know, that, it's what it is. Like, for example, I talk about your adoptions. <laughs> and well it's funny to me because every time you go to China you seem to come home with a child I, I don't know if that's a trend not being sarcastic obviously because you went over there to adopt Obviously, we know that but looking at it from the outside it's like okay you know like I, like I am not familiar with the uh, process of adoption in China do they just randomly pick kids off the street? Do they have a souvenir shop at the airport? Like, oh, do you want to take a kid home? Yeah. Again, it's sarcasm. <clears throat> Obviously, we know, oh, you go over there, fill out the paperwork, blah, 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 meet the kid. Yeah, I'm not talking about the actual way. To, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about more of an a Jim and Daniel. How would Jim and Daniel adopt a Chinese child? <laughs> well, I don't know if we could even go there, but you get my point. It's more of that. So, yeah, I mean, seriously, it's like most people come home, they go, they go overseas to a foreign trip, and they come home with, like, a hat or a souvenir. You come home with kids, you just random kids, and it's just, it's weird. It, 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 that's a trend that I think needs to stop, because, well, whatever, I get into all that, too. So, <clears throat> anyways, let me start this. Um, again, I'm very reluctant to even commit any more words to this asshole, you, so this mini rose, quote unquote, if you will, simply will be lost on his massive ego, which it will be. It will be because you'll take it to heart and you'll be whatever. If I were to instead heap massive praise upon him or onto him, now I want to say upon him. Wait, wait. Uh, if I if I were to instead. Heap massive praise uh, on him. Okay, that'll work. Let's just say that vain and repetitive praise only goes straight to the mind and does irrefutable damage to the man's, to a man's personhood. Um, what the hell was it? I don't know if I want to read all this. Fucking a. And again, this is this was a rough draft, so I, I'm still gonna be making changes as I go through here. I'd never do that to him. My job is simply bringing him back down to earth and giving. I want to say giving, not give. Giving him a dose of reality. Because before, you got to understand, I, I just I just finished this, and I haven't actually read any of it aloud. So this is this is kind of an edit process for me right now. So I figured, you know what? You said you wanted me to read it to you, so that's what I'll fucking do. Two birds, one stone. Uh, and giving him a dose of reality. One might think I'm being mean here, but that is the first thing from the truth. What I'm really doing is offering him a free service <laughs> that normally anyone would have to pay extra for. Trust me, this will be an old-fashioned reaming here, folks, for which there, there are no safe words. He'll just have to grin and bear it. Now, is it bear, B-E-A-R, or B-A-E, whatever? I always get those two confused. Who fucking cares? You, you, you're the smart one. Fuck you. Uh, see, back in the day, he and I... 
Now, I wanted to just play this up, the whole used to, and this is, I don't know why I did that. It's just, I was having fun with it, so I don't know if it's, I, I don't know if it's worth keeping, but, anyways, see, back in the day, he and I used to play Halo. Now, the key word here, comma, is, oh, oh shit. Now, the key... Oops, I fucked that up. And the key word here, I did it on the other side of that, is used to. I know that's really two words. That's neither here nor there. The point is, we don't... We don't put all the fucking words in there. We don't play anymore, and that annoys me. He, along with the developer of said game, 343i Industries has helped me develop, and that's spelt wrong, replace, help me develop, it's not in there, there it is, help me develop what one might call a hatred, or even a dislike of the series in question. Either way, it's not good. As I said, we used to play, in quotes, every night, in fact. That is until one night he comes on. Oh, and did I mention that I personally bought him a few of the Halo games as we played the whole series up to that point, and even dropped $60 on a wireless headset for him. Trust me, I was invested in all this with actual heart and soul and fucking cash too. And fucking cash too, and fucking cash to boots. I, wait, hold on. I was invested in all this with actual, with my actual heart and soul, and I'm going to say my fucking cash, too, and my fucking cash, too. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Again, this is an edit, so fuck you. Again, I, I literally just wrote this. I didn't even, I didn't even reread it back. <clears throat> One night out of the blue, he informs me that he would be yeah, that he wouldn't be on for all next week. Wait. One night out of the blue, he informs me that he wouldn't How about won't? He won't be on for all next week? No, he wouldn't be on all for next week. Whatever. <sighs> no, he's always off doing stupid family bullshit anyway. Anyway, comma. And there's always the two-week Christmas hiatus, which just gives me the fucking shit sideways, but whatever. I get it. I allow him this time off <laughs> and feel that I'm being reasonable about it all. When it's longer than two weeks, however, how, ever, comma, that's when I have issue with it all with it all. It's not healthy to spend that long with family ever. I'm telling you, if you cluster fucking around your kids like that, <laughs> uh, it'll be it all. It'll be seen as being clingy and no one likes a clingy bitch. And be seen as being clingy by your kids, by your kids, if I could finish the thought. And no one likes a clingy bitch. Okay. So when he informs me of some random week long downtime in the middle of early spring, I can't help but be, I can't help but be, but be, but be. I can't help but be... Oh, I put... Oh, shit, I already had the word be in there. So I literally have it right now. I can't help but but be be. I have two fucking bees in it. I can't help but be slightly annoyed with that. With that. It's only been three and a half months since Christmas, so what the fuck else could he be up to? Well, I ask, what the fuck are you doing? He then says, going to China. And I'm like, Forever? Or just a visit. <laughs> in, other, in other words, the fucker is being lax with the info. 
I feel I deserve to know why my life is going to be ruined for a whole week, seemingly for nothing. He then enlightens me to, oh, we are adopting again, to which I couldn't help but reply, um, don't you already have three kids, motherfucker? Do you, do you, really, do you really need to go looking for more? <laughs> I actually said that. I, I know for a fact I said that. <clears throat> now, I want to pause here a moment and talk about his kids. Not outright, just him having them. <laughs> and what it means to me. <clears throat> As I said, we would... I don't know, should that... That might be... That probably should be italicized. We would play Halo. But I would No, it wouldn't. Never mind. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I was... I think it's never mind. I was thinking something else. As I said, we would play Halo with headsets and a live mic, so we could chat with each other. Chat with each other. I want to go back. Hold on. As I said, we would play Halo with head with headset with a headset would be nicer. With as I said, we would play Halo with a headset comma, and a live mic so we could chat with each other. Okay, that makes sense. Well, on the day in question, I probably should... Let me... Do, 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 do. Well, comma, start a new sentence. On the day in question, his eldest daughter, still a toddler at the time, decided for some... unknown random bullshit reason that without warning or without regard to Uncle Peter's eardrums <laughs> would scream excessively loud. This brings up many a point of interest. So I'll just list them in no particular order. Number one. First, no child should ever be randomly screaming like that, ever. <laughs> Which is fucking true. I don't care. I don't, I don't care how much you love your fucking kid. The kid, no, fuck you. You punch a kid in the fucking throat until it stops. It's that simple. Dog does it. He gets the same treatment. So I'm not. I'm not just you know picking on you or your kid or just kids in general. Uh, anyways, uh, let me let me start over. <clears throat> First, no child should ever be randomly screaming like that ever. And you, as a parent, need to put a stop to that shit asap. It's your job. <laughs> <laughs> now you gotta understand it's 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 parent versus single person. You know, it, there's there's that there's that war. It's like a civil war kind of a deal. It, it's like the Avengers Civil War kind of a deal. <sighs> now I'm not unreasonable. I may be single, and I don't get the whole we need kids thing. But as I said, I can be fair about it all. The only time a child should ever screech like that is if they are being chased by a stranger comma you know stranger danger and all that bullshit bullshit or if or if put that in there there's a clown in the room or I'm going to capitalize that or Said child, said child is being chased by, wait, no, wait, oh shit, I, I kind of fucked that up. Um, the only time a child should ever screech like that is if they're being chased by a stranger, you know, stranger danger and all that bullshit. Or, if there's a clown in the room. Or a child is being chased by said clown. Okay, that's that's a little better. <clears throat> there are acceptable times for high pitch I don't see screams with no abandon. These are acceptable times for high pitch screams with no abandon. Okay, that's that sounds better. Number two, the children only know me as Uncle Peter, 
And I've stated point blank, comma, many times, to reiterate the point, that I never want to meet his children, ever. I'm simply not a fan of other people's kids, in general, or people for that matter. But as it stands, there is a mystique about it all. I'm literally the Wizard of Oz to these children. The minute you pull back that curtain, it's all over. Mystique lost. And I just can't have that. (laughs) These little fuckers think I live in the computer somewhere. I'm like a digital Santa Claus. Or I send them gifts every blue moon when I can afford it. After kid number two, I told Matt that he needed to stop and knock it off because Uncle Peter can't afford all that shit. One child is fine, but then you had to buy two of everything. Now he's up to four. This Brady Bunch bullshit is raping my bank account over. I'm just thinking the word over. It's just raping my bank account. I had to resort to finding universal gifts that they all would like. Like the dinosaur pop-up book. That fucker sent me back $25. <laughs> It's actually funnier when you read it aloud, which is odd. <clears throat> if he finds or sexually reproduces any more, I'll have to resort to saving up to buy them a mini island so that the fucking tribe can live there in peace. It's like when you enter into a small hick town in rural U.S. of A. and see the welcoming sign that reads, Welcome to Wyoming, town of Go Fuck Yourself, Population 6. <laughs> I don't know if that's worded right, but I know what I was trying to say with that. Anyway, if he keeps his shit up, he'll have almost enough people to start a fucking baseball team in September during the lead-up to the playoffs. <laughs> fucking hate. <laughs> he'll start a band with that shit. I mean, says you got enough people. You got enough kids. You can start the jack. Fuck, I'm going to add that. He's got almost E... <laughs> children, comma, that he could start a white version of the Jackson Fuck Five. <laughs> Oops, I should spell everything right. Jack Sum, Jack Sun, Fuck with a V, F U C K, Jackson Fuck Five. Uh, let me go back. He's got almost enough children that he could start a white version of the Jackson Fuck Five. <laughs> Comma, it's insane. It's, oops, insane is one word. Thank you. Insane. It's, in, it's insane. I want to read that again because it's funny. Again, I just came all that off the fuck cuff, so. He's got almost enough children that he could start a white version of the Jackson Fuck 5. It's insane. <laughs> now, here's this was the crux of why I wanted to bring all this stuff up. I wanted to talk about this little, little theory. <clears throat> Number three. I have a theory. It's really a simple one. I believe that sound waves can, and in fact do, destroy the brain. Uh, I was tempted to go into like like one of those CIA like 1950s 1960s uh, you know project go you know go fuck yourself what are those little projects where they had you know project paperclip and all that weird shit I was gonna go into all that but I'd uh, whatever look if you want to add something like that in there that's up to you but <clears throat> anyways oh, that it destroys your brain a child screaming or country music just as examples see the sound wave enters the ear canal and travels up into the head, where it targets a certain part of the brain and starts to destroy it. Think of popping those sheets of shipping bubble wrap. Pop, 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 between your finger and thumb. That shit's addicting. And that shit's addicting, comma. And that, and that addiction is my proof that this shit is real. It's like, you, it's like your brain's way of telling you that it's happening. As the sound waves wrecks havoc on your synapses, 
and the brain cells just start popping one by one, it leaves the victim in a start? How about state, motherfucker? State of stupidity. Comma. Where right from wrong regarding their children simply doesn't register anymore. We all saw it at church. When a bunch of church members... Uh, let's see. When a bunch of church members... That's not right. Okay. That's got to be reworked. Hold on. We all saw it at church. When a bunch of church members would go out, okay, would go out to eat afterwards. Wait. We all saw it at church when a bunch of church members would go out to eat afterwards. Okay, okay. That's what I mean. Blah, blah, blah. I had to delete that word. Um, I'm going to say these instead of the. These brain-dead parents with their kids, with their kids, comma, would just sit there listening intently to the pastor as their little bastard spawn, I'm going to say spawn instead of kids, little bastard offspring, offspring, little bastard offspring fox, comma, would all be running... Running, it's two ends, motherfucker. Thank you. Run, wait, no, that, oh shit, it's put raining. Running around fucking with the salt shakers, comma, and screwing around in the bathroom. These parents were oblivious to the bullshit of it all. A certain part of the brain was dead. See, it's proof of evolution, because without that part of the brain being dead, they'd have all killed their kids by now. I'm gonna say every. I'm gonna say every parent would have killed their kids by now. And it's true, dude. I'm telling you right now. Uh, seriously, I'm telling you right now. If it wasn't for that part of your brain being, you you would have fucking snapped a long time ago. Don't tell me you wouldn't have. Don't tell me you wouldn't have. I know you love your kids and all that shit, but you put up enough of that shit. It's like just you. Know, I mean, seriously, I, like, I threaten a dog all the time. Like, he does stupid shit. Like, I, I tell him all the time, you know, one of these days I'm just going to slap the shit out of you. You're not going to know why, and it's going to be retroactive. Fuck you. And he seems to understand that, you know? Anyways, it's a fact. No one can take that much bullshit without one day snapping, comma. I keep forgetting the goddamn commas. Snapping and flipping the fuck out. You might not want to admit it, but you know my words are true. Which brings me back to the story in question, dot, dot, dot. <sighs> so after his daughter screamed profusely into the mic and Uncle Peter felt his brain cells popping one by one by one. <laughs> I like the way that sounds. One by one by one. Uh, I then hear, I then hear, I then hear something odd. I almost thought my mind was playing a trick on me, for it seemed like I heard Matt giggle. I thought for a second, I waited, but I couldn't help but wonder, what the fuck you giggling about, asshole? His reply still boggles my mind to this day, because in semi-retarded tone, he says, my daughter just screamed and she's so cute. <laughs> I'm like, there ain't nothing cute about what just happened, motherfucker. And it was at this point I realized that my friend, in fact, that my friend was, in fact, gone. His children killed him. His children had killed him. His children had killed him. <laughs> at least mentally. Comma. At least mentally. It's like an, it's like an episode of The Walking Dead. There's just enough brain left... There's just enough brain function, if you see, just enough brain function left, so that they can, oh shit, I got the word function twice, I don't really want to put, there's just enough brain function left, which I like that part, so that they can function in daily life, there's just enough brain, uh, what's, what would be another, another term, uh, 
there's just enough brain usage left. Usage, I'd say usage, usage. There's just enough brain usage left. Comma, 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 motherfucker. There's just enough brain usage left so that they can function in daily life. But not enough... Oh, see, wait, this is all fucked up. There is just enough brain usage left so that they can function in daily life, but not enough in basic social understanding regarding to, regarding their children's bullshit. They no longer see it. It's, it no longer computes with them, with them anymore. I swear to God, this motherfucker could step bare ass and barefooted on a hundred Lego blocks and giggle his tits off saying, My kid left those up, ha ha ha, fucking retard. <laughs> now, I purposely did it that way where the space is kind of wanted to be like, Dah, you know, like kind of like slow space. I don't I, I wasn't sure how to like uh, convey that, but it was, you know, it kind of ended with the fucking retard part. <clears throat> so, whatever. This brings us back to China. <laughs> I don't know, this is a funny section to me. This brings us back to China right before my friend died and his children killed him. <laughs> I love that thing that your children killed you mentally. It is like... I mean, seriously, you're kidding. Like, and you're like, oh, she's so cute. I, that, I know... See, the problem is I know there's enough brain function left where you're like, you hear that. And you register what I'm saying is, is truth. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. I know I... I know there's, there's something... There's a part of you that's like... I get what he's saying. But... And then it's a dot, dot, dot. And it just kind of travels off. And you forget your train of thought. I, trust me. I know that. I know, <laughs> I know that is a fucking fact. Um... Let's see, this all brings me back to China, right before my friend died and his children killed him. I just love the way that sounds. My friend died and his children killed him. I just, that's funny to me. That's just funny to me. <clears throat> this is not to be confused with his real... Not, real. <clears throat> this is not to be confused with his real near-death experience of heart attack and... Heart attack, comma. And actually being dead for ten minutes. Oh no, the death I'm talking about is much worse it's the living death that his children gave to him to be fair it's not just his kids it's every kid who does that uh, do, 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 do. comma we've all done it I remember when your friends used to be so super cool, but now they're ass. Now they're assholes with kids. With kids who are in bed by ten each night. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is his second trip to China, by the way. And every time he comes back, he comes back with a kid. <laughs> Do they just find them on the street over there? Or is there a souvenir shop at the airport that sells wayward and lost children? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Especially like in a gym scenario. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, in, in Star Wars where they pick up the robots, where the where the, uh, the Banthas come. And <laughs> they pick up the robots like, yeah, I'll take that blue one over there. <laughs> take a little Pico. Uh, again, you got you to gotta, you gotta have fun with it, you know? Uh, let's see, where did I leave off? We were children, we were lost children. Again, I don't know how the adoption process works over there, but I simply like to ponder all the ways it could happen. And please don't take this rhetorical commentary to heart, Matt, because opening that door and this prick will go on for hours and hours about the adoption process. I simply like the idea of randomly finding children on the streets of China and be like, in him be like you want to come you want to come home with me and a little short round I, I, I couldn't help I couldn't help myself with that a little short round from Indiana Jones that little short round looks <laughs> looks up and chatters 
in some... Wait, hold on. Little short round, looks up, comma, and chatters back in Chinese, comma, some form of gratitude toward him. With that, they go back to the... With that, they go back hand in hand to the airport and fly home. Most folks uh, come back... Most folks most folks come back from overseas with a hat, a magnet, or a t-shirt. But not him. He comes back with random kids to call his own. That's a funny thought to me. <laughs> so, anyways, I don't know. I don't know. There you go. There you go. Now, actually, I want to... Since I'm reading shit, let me go back. I want to read this mindfuck. This story... I was iffy about doing uh, another version of another story. But when I was reading through this, it's absolutely fucking hysterical. And I think it needs to be... Because it would tie in... This story, this mindfuck story, would tie in with the whole thing with Pastor Moore and... Because I mentioned it a couple times, but actually talking about it and actually having, like, a condensed version of the No Touch Love Story. Because I, I think, yeah, we talked about it in, in book one, but this, this is only, like, a page and a half, but it goes really well with the Pastor Morin stuff right before the old woman dies. And I did that open letter part. Again, you'll have to read it when we get to there, but... Anyways... Let me go through this, too. Uh, let's, let's see, the title... How the Doctrine of No-Touch Love Really f- Mind Fucked Us Boys. I don't know the question, but sex is definitely the answer. Woody Allen. I believe that sex is one of the most beautiful, natural, wholesome things that money can buy. <laughs> Steve Martin. <laughs> uh, this story finds me filled with regret, sadness, and even more regret. But what else is new? I don't want to be a total prick here. Comma. I don't want to be a prick here because I get where all parties in question were coming from. But the all around mind fucking that took place during. Wait. The all around mind fucking that took place has endured even to this day. After all these years later. So I'm writing about this for a second time, not bitterly, but simply in light of the grandiosity of the insanity that is my life. It's so messed up that I can only laugh about it now. So I commit this story to the written form for a second time, a condensed version, if you will, for your enjoyment. Sure as hell wasn't mine. Back in the good, wait, back in the good early 90s, back good early 90s, I don't know if I like the way that sounds, back in the good old, good old early 90s, good, back in the good old early 90s, when the fear of nuclear death from Russia and the Cold War had gripped us all with fear for most of our lives, we delightful children of the famed RCCS Christian School we're starting to come into our own. It was an interesting time, a time of good music, Ninja Turtles, and young girls clad in schoolgirl outfits. <laughs> Which, again, you got to kind of picture, especially toward the end. <clears throat> and an overbearing God who would smite us all for our wicked thoughts. It was as it should be. <laughs> I like that. I don't know why. Uh, You have to understand, this was pre-internet, Michael Jackson was still mostly black, and the only form of entertainment we had was a Nintendo NES entertainment system. Uh, We even rewound cassettes with pencils and had a Walkman. The things were clunky, but workable. And so were we in many ways. (laughs) I don't know what that means, but it's funny. I think it's funny, Uh, whatever. We at school were entering our rebellious years, as they called them, 
and the world was tempting us at every twist and turn. And the officials at RCCS wanted to put an end to it all. A few misdeeds had occurred within the hallowed halls that led them to take the first shot in this war against Satan and our youthly lusts. It literally was a war for our very souls and <laughs> very souls and cocks. <laughs> Trust me, the whole armor of God was put on that day. Especially the loincloth. <laughs> E-S-P-E-C-I-N uh, Especially the uh, loin cloth. <laughs> I was, I don't know, should we make it? I, I was debating if I want to make a, a joke about pitching a tent in the loincloth. <laughs> it's, you know, it's called about the armor of God and I'm talking about pitching a tent. See, hold on. Trust me, the whole the whole armor of God was put on that day, especially the loincloth in which we pitched a tent. <laughs> in which we pitched a tent. <laughs> I don't know, it's funny to me. It's funny to me at the moment, maybe going back, you know, an hour from now, it's not funny, but it's funny right now, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, the school decided to invest in training manuals for the boys. A booklet that can still be bought on Amazon.com. This booklet was called The Man in Demand, and its last printing was 1973. <laughs> so, so it was a tad bit out of date, to say the least. To say the least. It told us to pray for. <laughs> it told us to pray for President Nixon, and that God. And that God might bless him as he leads our great nation. Pray for President Nixon. <laughs> so fucking out of date that shit was. Uh, that's funny, dude. You have to admit that's funny. That's some funny shit right there. That alone deserves to be in the book. <clears throat> when this didn't seem to be working, they decided to call in the big guns. The head pastor would be making his grand entrance into our lives and sexual thoughts be damned. <laughs> I like that too. That's a good line. Let our sexual thoughts be damned. I won't bore you with a retelling of all the events, but the main point of the story here, comma, is the big gathering of everyone in the chapel that day. This, and there's extra space there. Damn fucking hair in my mouth. Fuck you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> this event consisted of us sitting there, comma, I always forget the comma, and getting reamed out, getting reamed out for our hard ons <laughs> by a guy, by a guy dressed in an all white Don Johnson's 1980 Miami voice. Dude, him and that fucking mustache, dude. He had that fucking porn mustache. And that fucking white suit. That holier than thou white suit. Actually, let me put that in there. Uh, by a guy dressed in... In an... Holy... Holier than thou... All white Don Johnson's 1980s Miami Vice suit <laughs> and a 50 pound Bible. It may sound comical now, but this was serious business back then. Satan and our lust patterns, quote unquote, had to be brought into check, and it was all for the betterment of the human race. <laughs> That's funny. I totally get that the guy has two daughters, but he went completely overboard with his bullshit. <laughs> Is bullshit, comma, and spiritual rhetoric. For the record, I'm not trashing the guy, just painting the picture, setting the mood for what for what's about to come next. His words to us were brutal. <laughs> His words to us were brutal ones, <clears throat> but there was only a hint of love to them. Grace was laden throughout his tirade. 
or at least I think it was. <laughs> That's, dude, that shit's so funny. I'm sorry, that shit's funny. This is funny. I don't care what anybody says. This is this is good quality fucking comedy right here. <clears throat> uh, keep in mind that this message was directed mostly at boys. God has something to say to us, and his and this holy warrior was going to make sure we heard it. God was angry with us and our erections, and his violence is just, and his wrath is swift. He will not be mocked, as Pastor screamed out. <laughs> you got that, that Don Johnson fucking Miami suit, fucking Miami Vice suit. <clears throat> that holier than thou Miami Vice suit. <laughs> Jesus. I just picture him, because I remember, and like, you, you could hear him pull into the fucking yard. You, we, you, it's like, we were told that Pastor was coming, and it was like we're all sitting there, because it was like you know, the Pope showing up, or the Godfather showing up, it was like, big deal, and you hear him pull in, because the window was open, you hear that, that crackling on the driveway as the tires hit the fucking pavement, it was fucking insane, it was absolutely insane, that he comes barreling up the stairs, like, you can hear him walking up the stairs, because the stairs were all rickety, so it's like, we hear, we hear the car, then we hear the door, and then we hear him marching up the stairs, and then he comes into the room and he's wearing that fucking Don Johnson outfit. <laughs> Just, holy Christ. Anyways, where I leave off? Um, oh, as Pastor screamed out, it all seemed to be going smoothly, actually. Dare I say, almost sane, in fact. But by the time it ended, he was all fiery, red-faced, and about to blow a gasket. <laughs> I like that too. <sighs> Our lives would forever change that day, and no, not for the better. Oh no, not at all. What started out started out as a loving, godly message about love, marriage, and the American way quickly escalated into a verbal assault on all things male. He started screaming, Don't you guys ever dare touch a lady of God. You keep your dirty, stinking, rotten paws off them. His tone now becoming more sauntered and tender with a hint of reflection as he address, addresses the girls. You are pure, innocent flowers of God, you're right. You'll one day become missionaries or pastors, wives, so you don't ever let a jerk pressure you into doing things you don't want to do if a guy ever puts his paws on you in a sexual manner you have my permission to punch him in the mouth pow right in the kisser you let him have it this teaching in quotes really messes with our heads and even the girls too I think ironically the girls wanted to be touched and the only missionary field they ever saw was a missionary position <laughs> I love that line it's just funny to me uh, I could tell you stories, a literal girls gone wild, season of fornication, angst, and used condoms. <laughs> the boys were totally mind fucked by all this banter. Even the orthodox, orthodontic nightmare was found. Now, this right here, actually two of these were you, so. <laughs> but I wanted to like spread out the wealth a little bit, so. Even the orthodontic nightmare was later found in the bathroom by one of the elderly teachers naked and molesting a burpee towel. <laughs> one sorry son of a bitch found himself getting fellatio by some slut from Camden during the O.J. Simpson trial. <clears throat> I'll that where it is. <sighs> Poor Dave, he couldn't stop touching himself. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was funny too. I guess it was better than touching a girl and going to hell over it. The school facility, or wait, oh, faculty, school faculty was so anal about no touch love that if a girl walked by and brushed up against you, you had, you had to repent. Me, I took it to me, I took it to heart. For me, I wasn't about it wasn't about wrongdoings, more about not taking the opportunity presented. It was only mere hours after the chapel perversion filled meltdown when the first chance came to me. For some unknown reason, 
known only to Mr. Resnick himself, he had planted a chair in the middle of the room up against the wall. The chair wasn't dead center, mind you, but it was up against the wall toward the front of the room. There was no rhyme or reason for it being there. That's my only point, because during one of our class break times, I found myself sitting on said chair. Let me pause here a moment and explain break times. We weren't allowed to talk during class time, but break was fine. They lasted about 10 minutes and were a time for us to get up and walk around during... During this time, Mr. Resnick would get up and thunder off and defend the school from angry ninjas, 007 style, or simply refresh his coffee, whatever. You know, just let your mind wander. I don't know which, but I like pondering the first idea myself. So as I said, I'm sitting on this chair that has no reason for being where it is. I'm just sitting there minding my own business, laughing and bullshitting with the guys, per usual, when out of the blue. I'm sitting there minding my own business, not a care in the world, just having downtime fun with friends. I have the heels of my feet close together as I sit, and my knees are apart. When out of the blue, Andrea starts to give me a lap dance. We aren't just talking slinky ass rubbing here, but full on straddle cowgirl dry hump. She grabbed my. <laughs> God damn. <clears throat> Seriously. Uh, she grabbed my right arm and hand and began holding it to her body. Remember earlier when I said I had regrets? Yeah, 30 years worth. We are talking hours after the chapel ordeal, and I'm finding myself being no-touch loved in, a, in such wonderful ways. I was taken aback, and I turned to her as if to say, What the fuck? Somewhere between licking my bottom lip and getting a complete heart on. I had a moment of clarity, or at least that's what I tell myself today. I pushed her off and rejected her forever. Not my intent, mind you. I just didn't want her getting into trouble. One of the goody two-shoes sees it, or worse yet, a teacher comes, comes bounding back into the room and sees her display of womanhood wrought down upon me. <laughs> There'd be trouble for me. To say the least, I honestly was looking out for her best interest, I think. Thinking back about it, if someone had walked in, who are they going to blame? The innocent flower of God or Mr. Dirty Rotten Stinking Paws? <laughs> Shit, seriously, can you imagine that, though? If, like, like Mrs. Paltier walked in and saw her doing that. I mean, she was, it wasn't just like, like oh, he, 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 you know. No, she was, she was like off the ground dry hump. I mean, it was fucking glorious, but whatever. Um, God damn, that's fucking serious. Holy shit. Um, uh, I'd have been set up the river sideways without a paddle. Doing right was such a waste, but I did right by her and didn't want her getting into trouble. It just didn't play out that way. She was clearly screwing with me, quite literally, in fact. <laughs> That's what I get for respecting women, not a... <laughs> and years later... Oh, yeah, this this fucking... This price chopper incident, holy crap. Then years later, I get propositioned for a threesome at 2 a.m. in the price chopper parking lot by a dude and his, his probably underage female friend. He says to me, she wants you to watch at first, but then... At that point, I stopped him and said, no, nah, that's okay. I have work to do. Thanks for asking. <laughs> he then comes up to me a second time and says, she really wants you to join in. <laughs> Jeez. Dude, I, the idea that actually fucking happened. And I, I wasn't playing it. It wasn't like he just was like asking for direction. As I'm like, oh yeah, they want to have a threesome. No, no. I wish it was that simple. I wish I was making it up because it would make more sense. And I was just kind of like, you know, trying to be a tough guy. I, I could deal with that, but... <sighs> Anyways... Come with me the second time and says, she really wants you to join in. And then starts going into detail about who's going to be doing what and to whom. I then stop him again I then stop him again a second time by saying, Yeah, no, that's cool, I really have work to do. Which was actually true because we were there cleaning the parking lot with the sweeper. 
All this led into five years of... Okay, whatever. Um, this all led into five years of great... Well, the greatest time of my life, talking about the Jews. Is, yeah, it kind of jumps around, and I don't know if it should be broken up, because it kind of goes from that school moment to into the future, and then even further into the future. So, I don't know, whatever. Oh, the greatest time of my life, having... Have you ever loved someone so much that when you... When you're awoken at 5 a.m. by chirping birds, you just smile and go back to sleep? In the end, I couldn't pull the trigger and commit. I was committed totally to her, to the point of I would marry this person, but religious bullshit stood in the way, and I just couldn't commit to that. I was ultimately stifled by a Jewish dentist, and now I'm a bitter prick who wants to watch the world burn from his lawn chair. All in all, I'm glad I respected Andrea that day, comma, but in hindsight, if I could, if I could do it all over again, yeah, I'd let her, I'd, <laughs> I'd have let her grind a little bit longer. I'm not going to lie. Everybody thought I had a crush on another girl. She was a bitch. She was cute, don't get me wrong. We even wrote notes back and forth, but she was no Andrea. And I put Sai at the end. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm actually going to join this. I should do a whole sequence of just, uh, you know, reading this shit. <sighs> Anyways, I've got some good stuff here, I think. i got Bolster's Pond, when Dale T gets, uh... Shit, how long is this clip? How long is this clip? Uh, where is it? We are at an hour. Okay, well, fuck it. Um, maybe, I don't know. Do one more, maybe? I don't know. I don't know if I want to... I gotta pee, that's the problem. Um... Yeah, fuck it, let's do Bolster's Pond. <sighs> On the not-so-golden pond. Back in the mid-late 90s... I, I like the term mid-late 90s, I don't know. Our family decided to venture into the world of church. And... Oh, it should be as... Nope, nope, put the little... There you go. Back in the mid late 90s, our family decided to venture into the world of church, as in, comma, we were going to play church for a while, simply because we had nothing else to lose at that point. The church we finally settled upon was one of the local AG, or Assembly of God, churches, who just happened to be very Pentecostal. And loved speaking, and loved their speaking in tongues and babbling like a brook. Now I, I put the brook in there because there's a water uh, theme here, <laughs> because obviously it's a baptism story. <clears throat> um, for a family new to this three ring circus, it was a lot to take in. In fact, it's been forty plus years now, and we're still not acclimated to their brand of spiritual insanity. I've mentioned the AG Church a few times. Four, be four. See, like every time I read this, I, I find new stuff I could add. I mean, like, I can understand when when people say who do art who say it, art is never really ever finished because it's like you could always do something else. Like Bob Ross could always just put another little squirrel in there, happy little squirrel, or like a game developer could add, you know, do something else. Like every time I read this, it's like I want to add something else to it. Uh, but this story is much more odd. I mean, not odd per se, in and of itself, but odd in how it came to be. Basically, the points I want to talk about... Wait, basically the points I want to talk about now are some of the inner workings. Well, pretty much any Christian church. Pretty much of any Christian church. One of the key components to a successful ministry is tithing which we talked about before. I should probably add that. Tithing, which... I talked about... I talked... about before. And the second is baptism, which I'll talk about now. Comma. Which I'll talk... 
about no period it's the latter that I want to talk about right now oh okay um I don't, that sentence doesn't need to be there now but I, I just changed it uh hold on let me reread it one of the key components to a successful ministry is tithing, which I talked about before, and the second is baptism, which I'll talk about now. It's a ladder that I want to talk about right now. Yeah, see, it's the ladder that... That's the point of it. Let me just take that whole sentence right out. I like the ladder part, but I don't really need it. Uh, do, do, do. Okay. Uh, if you're an atheist or simply not familiar with the inner workings of said event, just picture, just picture, an Al Qaeda waterboarding, only done upright. Comma. That is a Christian baptism. Oh, that wrong. Uh, if you're an atheist or simply not familiar with the inner workings of said event, just picture an Al Qaeda water burning only done upright. That is a Christian baptism. That is like a Christian baptism. Whatever. Uh, normally, the church, coincidentally located on the adjacent property line as Camden Wire, the very same in which DLT fell into the dip tank, was near a local stream slash river. Pretty much, it was only a river during certain parts of the year. Now, it was, it was kind of a uh, it was it was kind of a, a rough flowing water source, but I'm kind of making it seem like it wasn't. Whatever. Uh, do, 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 do. During certain parts of the year, when the water was high enough, one might call it a creek the rest of the year. Well, being as close to Camden Wire, there was no telling what type of filth they were dumping into the water supply of the local mighty, the local small mighty village of Camden. In other words, who really knew what type of third eye bullshit one might catch from said river? Needless to say, that our yearly baptism only happened there once. Uh, so that, does that make sense? Needless to say, our first yearly baptism, our first yearly baptism, our first yearly baptism, because it was it was our first one, but it was going to continue. Is what I'm trying to say. I don't know if that makes sense. Needless to say, our first yearly baptism only happened there once. I guess that makes sense. Plus, it was hard for the old folks who wanted to take a dunk for the Lord to climb up and down the steep, sharp bank. It wasn't uncommon to see the old elderly woman... That was coming out right. It wasn't uncommon to see the old elderly women, old elderly woman who always sat in the third row each week, each week just floating downstream. In fact, I don't recall seeing her after that day. Hmm. <laughs> She's the one that floats down the river. I think that could be funnier, though. I don't know. I don't know if I should... I don't know if I should go into talking about, like, her flailing her arms or something, or just... I don't know. I'll have to think about that. <sighs> it was then suggested that we see about using one of the members' pools. It was then suggested that we see about using one of the members' pools. Okay. Well, we... Should I... Uh, I'm going to capitalize we. Well, we had a pool. But we lived 30 minutes away and no one wanted to drive the distance. Drive uh, the distance. I mean, 30 minutes to drive for a nice, clean water, for a nice, clean, slash, clear, watered pool, clear water pool, clear water pool, comma, isn't all that much to ask, if we're being honest. 
Thankfully, they declined my mother's offer because I didn't really want them coming over anyway. So the next best and local idea was to use Bolster's Pond, in quotes. Think of it... Think of it as on Golden Pond, only without the memories. <laughs> now, the Bolsters really didn't have a pond, per se, as they more or less had a huge pit that they dug themselves and filled with water. Water that quickly turned green and putrid. <laughs> what, they, what they had done was dig a pit, as I said, and lined it with tarps, and try to keep tarps and try and keep water in and try to keep the water in it it didn't but they tried <clears throat> they even went as far as to try and keep filling it with fish but the water was so rancid that they all I don't want to say rancid and putrid but I used putrid not too long whatever so rancid, I'm going to say and putrid, fuck it, I keep saying putrid, rancid and putrid, that they all died within days of being added. Being a kid, I didn't know any better. All the times I went there to swim, quote unquote, when I could have been home in clear pool water, it makes me ill just thinking about it, just sitting there Waist deep in frog shit infested cesspool of woe and disgust. Don't get me wrong here, the bolsters were good people. Well, John the husband. John. John. Thank you. The husband was kind of an asshole. Some of the stories I heard about him. He's kind of an asshole with some of the stories I heard about him. <clears throat> but whatever. Wait. I, I changed that. Oh, fuck. The problem is I was doing stuff on the computer and sometimes it doesn't want to carry over. <clears throat> I don't know. The, the fucking iPad does it automatically, but the computer, you have to you have to actually go up and click save and it's just bullshit. Um, whatever. But whatever. What made them interesting was that they were an only child family, much like we were. So we had that in common. Plus, their son was a church friend of mine. So going there was always fun. <sighs> My nose is getting stuffed up. What's that? My nose is stuffed up. <sighs> so when I trashed their pond, I'm doing it at the age of 40. Yeah, damn it. This is not the original. Or this is the original, not the updated. Bitter and dead inside. I just... And just thinking back to how gross it really was. Ew. <sighs> well, as reality would have it, and the point of my writing about, about it now, Dale T. and the old woman, uh, I am assuming, before knowing it was going to be held in bolsters, in the bolsters... Shit, damn it, it's not the fucking version that it's supposed to be. Motherfucker. Uh, let's see, I'm assuming... Uh, God damn it, let me go back. I can't, I gotta roll over it because I can't fucking breathe. Uh, well, uh, as reality would have it, and the point of my writing about it now, Dale T and the old woman, I'm assuming, before knowing that it was to be held in bolsters... Putrid, again, uh, held in bolsters, rancid pond, decided that it was in fact time for them both to get baptized as well. Baptized as well. So the way these things work is you have the head pastor, in this case, yeah, son of a bitch. I did an edit to this, Pastor Wallen, and Dave Clark. 
Now, here's the thing with Dave Clark. I don't understand how I go on Facebook and I see your mother and Dave Clark knowing each other. That just is something that should not happen. Those two should not know each other, and it pisses me off that they're in cahoots together. Whatever. Now, Dave I talked about before. He was the dude in church who would get, quote-unquote, led by the Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, and run up and down the aisle screaming and carrying on and making tribal Indian noises as he galloped like a pony up and down and in between the rows of chairs, flipping his hands into the air and whatnot. It was said that he said he later it was said that he later spent some time in the nut hatch for a while, straight jackets and all. To which I say, yeah, no shit. Don't get me wrong, he's a good guy, just a tad bit fucked in the head if you get my meaning. So the pastor and Dave would escort the victim, or I mean the baptize E. Now I don't know how to spell that. Baptize E. I don't know how to fucking spell that. The baptize E. Which it's not a word, but we need to make it a word because it fits. Or I mean the baptize E out into the local water hole, put their hands on the person's shoulders and lower back, and dunk them ass backwards into the Sea of Galilee. Oh shit, this is not the fucking edit. God damn it. Fuck! Dipped him backwards into the Sea of Galilee. Well, out waddles Dale T. Ah, son of a goddammit! Yes, yes, yes. I said pants and it turned out to be paints. Yep, there's paints again. This didn't fucking update. God damn it! He's wearing. I'm gonna say jeans because that's what I changed it to. He's wearing jeans no shoes, and a white shirt. Now, Dale T. always has a thing about getting into cold water where he likes to say profanities and whatnot while his balls take the plunge. And as I'm watching from the shoreline, I can almost read his buck lips saying, Fucking shit, it's cold, goddamn! <laughs> you literally see his lips puckering out the evil discord as he slowly walks through the slime and muck barefoot barefoot. That was something else I added. Oh, he now takes his plate. Yeah, see, this this part, I, I fucking changed it. Oh, God. I hate when fucking technology doesn't fucking work. Now, he takes his place between Pastor and Dave, and as they read him his last rites before dipping him back like a stiff drink, for tipping him back like a stiff drink. Dale T. holds his nose with one hand and clenches his chest with the other. They then dip him backwards, holding him and guiding him all the way. His right leg then suddenly slips, slips, comma, and gives out. And he falls backwards, 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 there we go head first under the water, as he's supposed to. Keep in mind that they are still holding him, comma, and he's fine. But he starts panic kicking. <laughs> so again, you got a picture. His legs are now like out. He's like like splashing like profusely in the water while they're holding his back. And it would, again, which is what you're supposed to be doing. Because you're, you're almost supposed to like do a matrix move into the back, where it's like your knees are supposed to bend. <laughs> it's just the idea of panic kicking. It's just, that fucking word picture is hysterical. Uh, let's see. Where did I leave off? <sighs> but he starts panic kicking and causing a ruckus nonetheless. Keep in mind that he's only about crotch deep in water here. But much like being waterboarded, it seems it seems far worse than it really is. I'd love to say that the heavens opened up and that doves flew down that from the sky and that God spoke in thunder. 
under us tones, comma. But other than a frog shitting on his forehead, nothing profound took place. Minus the scene he made, of course. Next up was my mother, comma. And after watching Dale T's display, I opted to go inside and try to get some thing to drink, some thing to drink. For some reason, I want to say that the Coleman's brought the Kool-Aid because it tasted as if... Uh, see, this this was re-edited. Damn it. I want to say the Coleman's brought the Kool-Aid because it tasted as if they were using the pond water for it because they're that cheap. Comma, because they're that cheap. I think someone had said it was from their well water or something and that their property had sewage issues. So the Kool-Aid literally tasted like shit. <laughs> either way, either way, Dale T's mother had well water and it's gross as fuck too. Let me tell you. After all that, when... Okay, after... Yeah, this I changed to shit. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, oh, you know what I did? I added this story. I think I think the added is in the actual. Uh, shit, I think it's in the actual book compilation because this right here is just a standalone story. So I think what I did is I copied it, put it in there, and then edited it again. And I think that's where the edit is. So it didn't. Whatever. It didn't. It didn't fix this, but it fixed that. So, whatever. But we're almost done. So, so, uh, so the Kool-Aid literally tastes like shit. Either way, okay, blah, blah, blah. After all that, when everyone was, everyone, whatever. Uh, everyone was baptized, whatever. Everybody was done being baptized, blah, blah, blah. It was then time for the kids to go out and swim, and this is where I found myself waist deep in the wrong end of that shithole. Other than the over overtly swamp water baptism and the questionable powder drinks, the rest of the time was fun, the food was good, the fellowship was good, so it wasn't all that bad. Well, it was, who am I kidding? Just watching Dale T struggle helplessly in a swamp made, swamp homemade pond while everyone looks on and tries to show respect without laughing outright at him at his display is just something you don't forget. And then I put hashtag never forget. <laughs> uh, again, it's going to be different probably when you read it because, like I said, this. What I did is I did each story separate and then I compiled them, obviously. So this version hadn't been updated, but I think the one inside the compilation is the one that got edited. So that little bit I pro that I read is going to be slightly different probably, but you're not going to remember that. So whatever. <sighs> Anyways, that's it. I, I am definitely uh, done reading to you. Um, fuck you. You should read to me once in a while, you asshole. Anyways, so I read you three chapters of the book, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now this is those were things I had just found, well actually the bolster pond I just did yesterday I just wrote that fresh yesterday but uh, the mindfuck story I found that somewhere I don't even know where it was I forgot I'd written it and I found it and I was like you know that actually would go good with the whole pre-Pastor Morin because I should read you that story but I gotta pee to be honest with you I'm tired and uh, whatever maybe I'll do another one but I put in the book, I put this open letter that we did to FACnet and we did to the church and, and whatnot because it was, it was really, it goes really well after I trashed Pastor Morin in the church for threatening my mother's job while she's dying of cancer. And it goes into that letter, the Boo Hoo Brigade, and then it goes right into, and we went to my grandmother's and picked out a casket for my mother. Really, really good transition there. So if I take that mindfuck story and put it like somewhere just before that, 
it'll harken back to the letter, which then goes back to him trashing my mother. It's a really good little little sequence, and it it, it fleshes out the story really well. So, you, in other words, you see what I wrote, and you see that people got pissed off by it, <laughs> and because it was so funny, who cares that they got pissed off? Fuck them. Anyways, it, it's really. It's it's actually more elaborate than it probably should be, but it's I'm I'm kind of happy where it's headed. And again, this is like behind the scenes stuff that nobody else is gonna know. You probably wouldn't even notice it, just reading through it if I hadn't mentioned it. But again, it's it's what I'm, my my mindset is I'm going through all this. So anyways, here's your here's your story time bullshit. Um, and as I said, I was editing it as I was doing it and. Because it's like anything else. It's like the, the more you read it, it's like, oh, I could add another word here. I could take this word out. I could switch that around or, you know, add an entire section. It's just, it's actually a fun process. But there comes a point when you have to just say, that's it. It's over. Stop. Shit's done. No more. <clears throat> right now, I am officially halfway done with the book. Book two. Um, as far as my edit going through it all. I have, I think there's like, I think I did like 37 chapters slash sections, and I think there's 37 more to go. So that's not bad. I'm pushing for about 200. Right now we're at about 172, three, maybe four pages. Yeah, 74 when I add that other, when I add that mindfuck story. It'll be 174 pages. But that doesn't include the table of contents, which is going to be at least a good two to three pages. Any pages that we might skip between that and the actual story and that doesn't include skipping down to the next page at the beginning of each chapter so we're talking at least probably well if there's 37 that's almost 37 extra pages of just blank space because you got to skip down i mean no, it's not really 37 but figure at least half of that i mean shit yeah you're gonna, it's gonna be a over 200 page book realistically um I was thinking to go maybe around 220 because the, the first book was 320. I I really want to go 300. I really do, but uh, you know why oversaturate this book when I can save some of that shit for the next one? And I don't know. It's just I don't. I just feel like I'm not accomplishing what I want to accomplish. I want three. I like I'd like around 320 pages basically. I want I basically want. The equivalent are even slightly better than the first book, but uh, I gotta be realistic too. Because realistically, I mean, shit, we could have taken book one and broke it up into like three books and put it up on Kindle and got like three times the price for it and charged like ten bucks. We could have got like thirty bucks for the for that one book. I mean, it's three hundred pages. I mean, you could literally do. There are people who do ten page or do a hundred pages for ten bucks up there, and they're they're getting sales left and right. So give me a break. Give me a break. I mean, I, I highly doubt they're putting up three, four hundred page books and shit. Of course, you know, I do it. I get nothing, but whatever. Not bitter. You know, because the more stuff you have up there, the more stuff people see. And if they see that one, then there will be a link to see another one. And it's like, oh, I like, I thought this was funny. Let's go look at the next one. Oh, I like that too. Then next thing you know, you got a fan base. You know, that's how it works. Supposedly, it doesn't seem to work for me, but whatever. But yeah, putting it up there and then having people just click on it is is good. Because, uh, let's be honest, the, the, one of the reasons the first book didn't sell is it was twenty two fucking dollars. I ain't gonna ever buy no twenty two dollar book. I wouldn't even buy a twenty two dollar book that I about something I like. You know. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I wouldn't even buy a $22 book of porn, you know? I mean, seriously. <laughs> what, whatever. Uh, but, yeah, I'm definitely... In, I'm, dude, I'm having a fucking blast doing this shit. I, I, like, I have got, like, a renewed vigor of life, and I hate life. I, just, I hate my life. I hate my existence. I hate everything about it. I don't want to die. I just get angry. But, you know, whatever. But this is actually... Uh, this has actually been a lot of fucking fun. Especially, you know just reliving some of that stuff it's just been insane it's a little weird now because I'm right now I'm currently in the story about the old woman's death I'm on the uh, old woman where she's uh, 
being displayed and in, in, in the funerals being hosted by Weird Al because Carl Trainer looks just like Weird Al in a way. And it's weird, and it's like I've always kind of associated with him, with Weird Al, because, you know, like Amish Paradise and shit like that. So it's like, I see this, it, it almost feels like every time I go there and the family member's dead, it feels like it's a comedy act. <laughs> like I'm going to be punked or something, like the old woman's going to sit up in her casket and like, we got you. It, it, it was always like, or Graham's like, Peter? It's, I, 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 <laughs> you got to understand how my mind uh, processes that shit. But whatever. <sighs> Anyways, there's a bunch of stuff I could go into. Like, like I was just thinking about how uh, I keep having these reoccurring dreams about the old woman, and it was weird because when it first started, in the dream she would do stuff that would just fucking piss me off. I mean, to the point where I'd literally look at her in the dream and say, "I'm glad you're dead." That's how bad it was. Like, she would just go out of her way to, like, just infuriate me. And I'm like, I'm glad you're dead. And it was just weird to me. And I don't... I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that, but that's just how the dream played out. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, you have, like, this weird... See, then I had this... Uh, it was, like, this ongoing dream that lasted for, like, three years where my mother wasn't dead but my but her and my father were like having a divorce and she just took off it made me think she was dead I had that dream for a while and then she finally came back and I'm like what's what, what, what do you mean you're still here what do you mean you're still alive which I don't know if it was like my way of like in a religious sense saying you know there'll be a rapture one day and she'll she'll be back kind of a deal. I think it was similar to that and it was just like it was weird. It was awkward and it was just anyways, I don't want to get into all that. That's a, that's a clip for another day. Oh my god. I can't breathe, dude. Both no, oh my god, both nostrils are fucking I gotta get up and you know, like, like change position so I can start to breathe again. Whew. And anyway, I gotta pee, dude. I've had to pee for like an hour. I had to pee like 20 minutes into this, and, and it's like, I've been kind of like wiggling my legs back and forth. I'm laying in the bed, so my wet, my legs are kind of just ruffling together, and I'm like rubbing myself raw in the thigh, and I need to stop. But anyways, I'm, I'm going to fucking end this, so enjoy it for what it is. <laughs>